scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Good students, faithful disciples, an outpouring was happening and they were in Ephesus. They said, we've not even heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And Paul put his hand on his head and said, verse 3, unto what then were you baptized? And they said, unto the baptism of John. Paul said, we need to have a conference fast. And he began to speak to them, verse 5, that, that, that when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, verse 6. When Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost, that was not the first time he wanted to come. It was then by revelation he was given the allowance to come and become the factor for accuracy in their discipleship. I'm showing you this scripture for you to appreciate that anything you do as a believer, no matter how well intentioned, if the spirit of truth is out of that process, do not trust the result. Are we together? Yes. That when the Holy Spirit comes, he is so profoundly powerful and important that he has it. It is only the Holy Spirit who can activate your organs, your capacity to interact with the spirit realm correctly. You can navigate your route of perception through divination, but it will come with a plethora of side effects. Only the Holy Spirit. And as you heard the man of God preaching and teaching, the wisdom that poured forth from him was a testament of a relationship with the Holy Spirit. I want to request before you sit down to pray a desperate prayer, Spirit of the living God, reveal yourself and reveal Jesus to me. Go ahead and pray that one sincere prayer. Reveal yourself, reveal Jesus to me. The revelation of Jesus in the book of Revelation, only happened because he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I saw, I could trust what I saw because the agency that sponsored that revelation was the Holy Spirit. Pray a sincere prayer. Sheba salako safra This is what God is doing in Africa. The revelation of Jesus will, all, will turn into a revelation or a manifestation of error, witchcraft, deviation, divination and all kinds of things until the Spirit of God comes to guide us. Holy men wrote what, it is, what is written was a subject. Listen, listen, listen. Hold on. What is written only happened because they were inspired of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, there will be nothing that was written. I hope you know that when you carry the Bible, the Bible has three layers to it. There is a historic and archaeological layer to the Bible. You can read the Bible as an MSc or PhD student studying religion or theology, not having a relationship with Jesus at all, and you can get the historic archaeological construct of scripture number two there is the doctrinal construct of scripture 
and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise the bible lists for us six foundational doctrines in hebrew chapter 6 that represents the protocol of the believer's journey six of them foundational doctrines hallelujah it comes from the latin word doctrina a body of knowledge that translates a disciple to look like his master where the holy spirit can open you up to truth that will be applicable in your life but not sufficient to become a doctrine it's called a personalized dealing you can see something in scripture that only you can see but the condition for anything to become a doctrine according to scripture is that that body of knowledge must be captured in the old testament revealed in the ministry of jesus preached by the early apostles these are the three conditions for any body of knowledge to become doctrine so if the lord looks at me today and based on my call and my election he decides to tell me for instance never have more than three cars i have weighed you and i have found out that your spiritual stability will be at its best if you have only three cars anything beyond three cars will corrupt your passion and distract you that is not a doctrine it is a revelation that came out of my relationship with the holy spirit and because of my obedience i will have tremendous results if you come and ask me the secret to my success i will tell you i had only three cars as part of the many things that made me successful and as a mentee you may copy that you see that now and then it becomes the error of balaam the way of balaam the doctrine of balaam so there are many things today that have become doctrines in the body of christ that were sincere they don't have to be demonic they were personalized dealings that were not limited to the level of their prophetic construct because of the result they produced in the life of those who had them they were now translated and used as bible study manuals and many people were mentored after that personalized dealing and now it has become a doctrine i am telling you that the cure to error for error is not just the sincerity of your heart but the presence of the Holy Spirit. This revival that God is brewing in Africa, honored to see the profound things he's doing in East Africa. I've traveled a bit across this continent and I have seen by the privilege of God's grace, profound moves of God, manifestations of the hand of God, apostles rising, prophets rising, evangelists rising, in ministry and in the marketplace. My fear like Paul is that if for any reason we do not restrict ourselves to number one scripture number two mentorship number three the ministry of the holy spirit we do not stand a chance for survival let me repeat myself number one restricting ourselves to scripture there are many extra biblical texts and like i told you yesterday the bible acknowledges them the annals of the kings the books of jasha the dead sea scrolls the book of Enoch. There are many other extra biblical experiences. There were books Moses wrote before he met the God of the Bible. And those books are being used today in all kinds of Eastern religions. But the Bible tells us that sufficient is what is captured in this book. That in partnership with the Holy Spirit, it can mentor any believer to become of stature. Are we together? and then mentorship it is important for us to respect he he made a statement that was so profound so profound hallelujah no matter how tall a tree is it only stands to the degree to which is connected to its foundation no tree hanging in the air has a chance for survival you don't call that growth it goes up only to come down so while god helps us to progress in our understanding we must respect the fathers and the foundation that they have they have placed even though samuel is rising god will still speak to samuel using the voice of eli and if you do not respect the voice of eli then you may not hear what god is saying even though you will be the prophet who will anoint the kings in israel hallelujah 
But more importantly, we must respect the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. The one who guides. The one who instructs. The spirit of man is now one with the spirit of God. And the Bible says the spirit beareth witness with our spirit. He can bear witness. You can know that as spectacular as this experience is, it has no foundation in Christ by the spirit. The truth is that the Bible without the assistance of the Holy Spirit will only end up being a book that is mad with all kinds of controversy and confusion. There are many people who have read this Bible sincerely and at the end of it they came up with all kinds of statements and have left the christian faith into all kinds of practices the holy spirit is the only one who can guide us into all truth he helps to bring life to scripture are we together now yeah our time is gone my assignment john 1 6 and 7. let's honor apostle grace lubega again profound truth God bless you and one of the things that I hope we'll do as we conclude this conference is to pray for a baptism of the grace for humility our generation is such an arrogant generation and God must have mercy on us beginning including the person speaking to you you see this this is a conference there is no tell them here this this arrogance has plagued a lot of people pastors leaders we have remained victims of this knowing only syndrome there are several people who have in pride believed that singularly they are the ultimate custodians of the truth of the of scripture that's that understanding is an attack itself Because at the zenith of Paul's apostolic ministry, here's what he says, that I may know him. Hallelujah. That's why I have profound respect for every man of God here who has left your busy schedule to come and sit. We do not teach because we are the best. It is an election of grace. Hallelujah. John chapter 1 verse 6. Let me do my assignment tonight and then we'll close. There was a man sent. Just stop. There was a man sent. Not there was a man who came. There was a man sent. The awareness of the fact that he was sent is the first revelation I want you to have. There was a man sent. The second information is that he was sent from God. He came through the womb of his mother, Rebecca in this case, but the Bible tells us he was sent from God. And the Bible says when he arrived on earth, they named him John. Seven, the same came for a witness. The Bible never said he came to prophesy. He came for a witness, to bear witness to the light. The Bible says that through the efficiency of his witness, men might believe. Kenya, Africa, this is the corporate mandate of every believer. Regardless the geography of your assignment, there is a mandate upon us as we prepare and we receive with gratitude and with discernment the revival that is sweeping across the nations. Africa is that one continent, I told you, that will present to the world a portrait of apostolic Christianity before Jesus returns. And I want you to know that there is a corporate mandate upon all of us. That mandate in its simplicity is found in John 1, 7. He came for a witness as a businessman. He came for a witness as a man of God. He came for a witness of the light. That through the efficiency of his witness, all men might believe. All men might believe. Hallelujah. There is an apostolic church that God is releasing. A church with a saint mentality, not just a membership mentality. The days of just maintaining membership, 
those days are drying up by the spirit that God is raising a people right now who are being guided by the spirit helped by the word men and women who understand purpose to every experience beyond falling down and standing up beyond a blind pursuit for political ambitions beyond a desire for ministry expansion that they are a generation sent and they have that understanding that i am sent as a businessman sent as a parent sent did you know that the assignment of mary as deduced from scripture was to be pregnant with jesus so her remaining a virgin was her sacrifice to fulfill her assignment are we together now how can pregnancy and giving birth be someone's assignment find out the kind of child that will come out of that sacrifice that God is so meticulous about everything in our lives. God himself delayed the arrival of John until Jesus was yet to come. I hope you know that if John was far older than Jesus, it would have affected him. He had to be at least just six months. He had to be within the generation of Jesus. So what you call the barrenness of Elizabeth was not barrenness. It was prophetic timing because everything in God's economy, listen please, everything in god's economy revolves around his will that is the reason why believers must walk with the holy spirit and be discerning many things you call delay may be god walking and keeping in time until certain things happen your bible says now when the day of pentecost was fully come no amount of sacrifice would have brought the holy spirit until that day fully come hallelujah fully come and so my proposition to us is that we don't just fall down and stand up cry shout jump hold services hold business meetings i had the privilege to be at the business session this morning and it was a phenomenal time but ladies and gentlemen here this is a revival that will only last when it is connected to purpose one of the distractions that destroyed many revivals is not even just the error that came from them is that they did not connect the move of the spirit to purpose to what intent is God bringing this outpouring to what intent is God bringing this prosperity to what intent is God bringing this miracle to what intent is God bringing this anointing my goodness you've been standing please sit down please sit down my sincere apologies didn't even realize you've been standing i promise to give a charge i promise to give a charge i promise to give a charge i receive grace to stay in um in that promise are we together most believers have blind ambitions that are not connected to purpose when jesus was teaching us to pray before he even taught us to talk about our needs he said when you pray pray in this manner our father which art in heaven hallowed be your name thy kingdom come let it come in earth not on earth in earth the first earth being you that earthen vessel your kingdom come in my life and then my territory let it be done in my life as it is in the heavens then he says with respect to the kingdom come agenda give us this day our daily bread the desire for daily bread is connected to kingdom come lead us not into temptation connected to kingdom come deliver us from evil connected to kingdom come every other thing from that point was connected to kingdom a woman kept praying and praying for a son but it was the sincere desire of a woman to end the mockery of her the stepwife that woman in the bible was called hannah for as long as she did not connect her prayer and her desire for a child to purpose prophecy and the will of god no amount of zeal and prayer brought the prophet but when she switched she went to pray lord you are looking for a prophet can my womb become that tool she prayed once once and a prophet arrived 
Everything in the economy of God revolves around his will. Revolves around his will. So if I ask you what you desire tonight, many of us may say double portion. Many of us may say the grace for this and that. And that is wonderful. It is God's desire to make that available and to stir it up within your spirit. But we would not have done justice to this conference if we do not remind ourselves of the purpose of all of these things that the entire economy of God that also includes the revival that is now before us is to see Jesus revealed to see Jesus glorified to see his kingdom come why is God moving in Kenya Nigeria Uganda it's not just because they were available vessels it takes more than being available there were many people in scripture who were available but were never used by god takes more than availability availability is a requirement but not the only requirement many people greatly available was even among the 120 in the upper room but nothing else is said about her she still remained the mother of jesus never called an apostle the mother of Jesus she was with him as the cross if there was in the upper room and yet that name the mother of Jesus and that's it hallelujah we are going to be praying and asking the Lord to visit Kenya afresh visit Uganda afresh visit malawi afresh south africa afresh nigeria afresh what we are experiencing today were things that our fathers some of them today have joined the cloud of witnesses they left as a prophecy that there was coming a move of god and while some they made those prophecies some of us were not even born but because god is faithful to his word he confirmed the word of his servant he performs the counsel of his messengers he has now come to us in this manner we must not afford to fail because of carelessness and lack of discernment this is why god is bringing this apostolic convergence this is beyond a kenyan program it is just that the venue is kenya <laughs> hallelujah this is a solemn assembly god is calling upon africa and telling us that the season has come the season where prophecy will be fulfilled where god is raising men and women of power of grace revelation wisdom in a proportion and a dimension that we have not seen after the order of Ephesians 2 and verse 10 and Ephesians 3 and verse 10 now on to principalities to the intent that now on to principalities and powers might be made known by the ecclesia the church the manifold multifaceted wisdom of God and that wisdom is sponsored by the spirit of the living God because the Bible tells us that he's able to reveal even the hidden wisdom of God he's able to reveal all that is in the mind of the father is someone getting blessed tonight so we're going to get into a session of prayer just adding to what the man of God shared here stirring our hearts so mightily there is a pathway many of us in the process of this prayer we will need to start with genuine repentance Lord I realign myself my church because of principles and practices that came as a result of sincere mentorship but now in light of the truth that you are bringing I realize that I've veered off your course your plan I need to be re to repent is not a language for sinners no the word repent means realign with respect to the blueprint realign with respect to the blueprint realign with respect to the blueprint we're going to call upon the name of the Lord over every church over every business 
and I'm honored to have some of the heads of government here enduring even late this night because we're trusting God for a rain. What God is doing in Kenya, he's doing in Uganda. What he's doing in Uganda, he's doing in Malawi. Can I tell you, there is no territory that does not have a witness. Some witnesses have not understood the way of God to rise to a position of visibility. And the strategy is hidden in what the man of God taught, the wisdom of God. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, now I believe 1, 23, 24, that Christ is revealed when the anointing comes. It is revealed as the power of God and as the wisdom of God. I did tell us yesterday, when you fall down, make sure you pray to understand what came upon you. It is not always power. It can be wisdom, an activation of wisdom that you stand up from that experience with superior intelligence. A level of acumen and an understanding that helps you to know the ways of God. There is always a pattern that precedes the glory. He told Moses, this is what he instructs that you should do in Leviticus. That when you do so, the glory shall be revealed. Hallelujah. I know in my spirit, I've seen this in my visions. That the day is coming where men and women, it will not just be a few, is starting like rain. One, two, three, four. But it will spread so fast. Apostles rising, prophets rising. It will not be a few, I can tell you. It will not be a few. Many, many people across the business world, in media, in ministry. You will see prophets like you have never seen. You will see apostles like you have never seen. You will see captains of industry, people in government like our brethren here who came to share in government but with power and discernment after the order of Daniel. Daniel was a prophet but his, the prophetic was applicable in government. It kept him through the reign of many, many kings. One of the things, let me speak prophetically. One of the things that God is doing as he has revealed to me, and this is consistent with scripture, is that in an attempt to build his bride to be of stature and capacity, God is bringing redefinitions. This is one of the things that God is helping. There is a reorientation that is coming to the body of Christ. A reorientation about ministry, about doctrine about principles and practices about satan about god about light about darkness because there are many many understandings we have that are sincere but wrong and we must have the humility to admit in the presence of greater life greater light to dissociate ourselves from these inferior dimensions of light it says be careful lest what you call light be not darkness. You can hold on to darkness for a long time. And because that's the only thing you have seen, you may call it light. He says, but that was the true light that lighted every man. My prayer, and as God has granted me the privilege to travel, next week we're in South Africa, doing the same thing. Helping to fan these ambers and these flames of revival alongside many other servants of God doing all that we're doing for the kingdom ah. and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle hallelujah but hear me Luke chapter 24 and verse 49. 24, 49. Behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but your assignment is to tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power. I wish I had time to talk about this. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, it says with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. Acts 10 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. Even Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power he went about knowing his assignment was not enough there needed to be an empowerment
empowerment he went about doing good healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him mm. the Bible says when he called them he gave them power against there are many dimensions of power the first is the power to become as many as believed on him he gave them the power to become then there is the power against hear me church of the Lord Jesus Christ the days of speaking without the grace to demonstrate our propositions that day has come to an end the Holy Ghost when we say he lives we must show that he lives Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you it will empower you to be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem Judea Samaria Kenya Uganda Nigeria you call it by the Spirit of the Living God we will see miracles like never before we will see demonstrations of the wisdom of God like never before we will see manifestations of grace like never before I can tell you the grace that is coming upon us is the kind of grace that can save a nation in one day can a nation be saved in one day ask Nineveh in one day in one day Nineveh was saved we're here tonight as we wrap up this conference to receive power from on high yes sir hear me ladies and gentlemen I wish I had the time I would have shared with you a bit of my experiences but one of the things that I see the Lord doing and I have had this in my visions I've seen it in scripture the fathers have prophesied it is that there are ancient wells hmm there are ancient wells that have been redug by the spirit of god every mantle that ever came upon the earth is still in the earth but there are rules of engagement hmm. there are mantles yes sir john was said to have come in the spirit and the power of elijah he manifested the spirit of elijah but not the power of Elijah there are mantles I have seen this I saw some of these visions as far back as 2005 and imagines by the Spirit it says blow ye the trumpet in Zion sound the alarm upon my holy mountain there is a solemn assembly the Lord of the harvest himself is leading this campaign and so it cannot fail the jealousy of God is behind this move is beyond the creativity of a man just inventing a move no man has the power to move this far it is of the spirit and by the spirit hallelujah there are psalmists that will rise after the order of David and write songs that become prophetic ladders. These are not songs that are special numbers. These are songs that come from the bowels of the spirit. They will help to give us ascendance in the spirit. Hmm. There are financial apostles that will rise in addition to economic principles. They will manifest a dimension of grace that the world has not seen the wisdom of God I'm saying this prophetically I'm not preaching again there are territories hear me there are men of God now who are doing assignments beyond their script and the reason is because the apostolic voices that should be represented in certain territories have not yet been matured so God will cause other apostles to midwife his move until the ones he have trained rise and this is why God must give acceleration to your growth because there are many people who are carrying their midwifing nations it is God's desire that every territory have apostolic and prophetic voices so if God wants to move across Kenya for instance 
and there are regions that are bankrupt of apostolic and prophetic voices he will have to transfer that mandate to others to midwife it helping the body while he trains other people that means when the laxity of your training is affecting the overall progression of God's move There are women who will rise after the order of Deborah. There will be women with the strength of many men. Mm. There are women who will sing for us the songs of Miriam. They will bring songs by the Spirit. There are Gideons who are in hiding. That the Spirit of God will have to come to them and say, even though you are the least in your father's tribe, it's time to arise. Almighty oh, man of fellow, do not tell me about your past. There is a prophetic word upon your destiny as a deliverer. Goliath will continue to roar for as long as David is slow with his training. So the impartation we're about to receive and we're going to do this under the corporate anointing is beyond just falling down and standing up. It's beyond just blindly praying. Let us invest upon the soil of Kenya tonight and settle certain things. Listen, your graves in Kenya today have men and women who left prophecies that are still alive. Abel, though dead, yet speaking. There are some of your missionaries, your history, the history in Africa is littered with men and women. Some educated, some uneducated, some never got to make the archives of history. But these were men who left prophecies that a move of the spirit is coming and it shall come to pass in the last days i shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy your young men your old men even upon your handmaidens this will affect all men everybody all men everybody hallelujah many years ago i'm standing in this vision and i'm watching an endless sea of people crying and I'm joining them in tears, asking them why they were in that condition. And they all shouted in concert, in unison, no food and no water. And I said, who was the cause? And they pointed their hands. It was a generation as far as my eyes could see. I said, no, I could not be that wicked. Let me come and rescue you. But I was afraid because in that vision, it looked like there were people who were angry and they were about to hurt me. And so I was hiding in that home. But I made up my mind like Esther that if I perish, I perish. As soon as I opened that door, there was a giant gray bearded man. And he said, give me your hands. Now I know he was the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the harvest, the spirit of truth, the comforter, the spirit of power. And I placed my tiny hands on his mighty hand. And he said, let's go. I will walk with you. When you hold my hands, everything becomes possible. When you hold my hands, impossible becomes possible. When you hold my hands, everything becomes possible when you hold my hands the national anthem of my nation says arise O compatriots it says Nigeria's call obey arise O compatriots I want to borrow that line and call a solemn assembly arise witnesses beyond membership of a church arise witnesses saints of the most high men and women who have been destined for such a time as this in spite of the not so good history that we have i want to tell you as a continent and as a people that the nations will see jesus revealed in and through africa in a way that has never been seen and this will happen in our lifetime the fire that is spreading from Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, 
Uganda, Zimbabwe, Malawi, call your nation, spreading. Because you are here, your nation has to be in that list. The zenith of the revelation of Jesus is the revelation of those he died for. When he's seen, his church must also be seen because he's called the head. Not just of principalities and powers. He's the head of the body. Do you see the head alone without the body? No. No. In as much as we have projected the head, it is time for the nations to see that body because the government shall be upon his shoulder. Light bearers, carriers of power and truth. He was talking about this, this terrible testimony of not having up to 200 members. I can tell you the spirits that are behind that, here comes a generation that will crush that narrative. A day will come on Sundays, there will be no people on the street because it doesn't matter which church you go, the devil is still in trouble. Are we together? He got it right. The poor narrative that is not just about crowd, if you are saying that to talk about the purity of your heart, you are right. But in terms of God's program, no, sir. It takes numbers. It takes numbers. It takes numbers. Did you hear what I said? It takes numbers. Go into the city and do not be afraid, for I have many people in that city. It takes numbers. If these many people can converge tonight, and replicate themselves by the spirit you imagine what happens to the economy of Kenya you imagine what happens to spirituality in Kenya you imagine the restorations that will happen in Kenya man of God refuse to be small it's not a proof of humility throw away that wrong destructive narrative and praise yourself to be an ambassador indeed the Bible says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel myself as a man of God that I will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant no there is grace to raise kings to raise kings according to Genesis 17 and verse 6 it says give us Genesis 17 and verse 6 I will make thee exceeding fruitful I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of your loins this is the heritage of the saints can we pray for a few minutes and then we speak over your life. I believe at the request of Reverend Julian, a time will come, I will invite Apostle Grace Lubega upstage again, Reverend Julian, somewhere in the course, and then our father. I want us to stand representing the unity of Africa beyond the walls of denominationalism, beyond these fighting men of God, fighting one another. We are we're going to stand here as a prophetic representation of the new order that God is bringing. Behold the days when ministers can celebrate themselves in spite of their diversity. We are tired of this fighting one another based on the prejudices of revelation and so on and so forth. There is one Lord, there is one faith, there is one baptism. And here comes a generation that will herald unity in power, unity in grace. But for now I want you to pray. I want you to pray that you are not only available but you are prepared to be used as a witness a witness to the truth I want you to open your mouth and begin to cry to the God of heaven you need men you need vessels my Bible says but in a great house there are all kinds of vessels vessels of gold silver wood clay some are unto honor others unto dishonor it says if a man will purge himself that man will become a vessel unto honor meat for the master's use kenya pray africa pray in the name of jesus i yield myself i align my members to be used mightily thou at my battle axe my weapon of war is there a prophet praying is there an apostle praying is there a teacher praying is there a kingdom financier praying
a government representative praying yes sir go ahead and pray across Kenya Uganda Nigeria Ghana arise almighty one blow upon our nation again blow upon our continent again Hello, Gim Madonna. Ah, hello, Gim. Hello, Gim Madonna. Are you praying? Hello, Gim Madonna. Hello, Gim Madonna. Go ahead and pray. I yield my church. I yield my business. I yield my voice. I yield my skill. Everything that I have, I cast my golden crown before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I bring my alabaster box and break it before His Majesty. Find pleasure through my life. Find pleasure through my ministry. Find pleasure, be glorified. Be revealed to the nation. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. King of kings, Lord of Lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. King of Kings, Lord of Lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now please listen to me. The apostolic ministry is primarily saddled with the responsibility of spiritual governance. One of the major assignments of the, a true apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ is that through the sacrifice of alignment, you capture the speakings and the blueprint of God's program as committed to a dispensation and then obtain grace translated as wisdom to communicate it with intelligence and with accuracy for the understanding of all that are connected to that generation and then through the sacrifice of alignment to work in partnership with the holy spirit to make available to the body the requisite dimension of grace it takes to work in keeping with that which you have received it's beyond teaching is beyond preaching is beyond singing that means the apostolic ministry has the unique ability to become any mold as may be desired by the spirit to transmute certain spiritual virtues so you can see an apostle look like a teacher in one meeting and switch to become a prophet in another meeting as the Holy Spirit desires whatever mold he needs to assume to ensure that that which is deficient in a territory is communicated God is able to make that happen so if I come into a territory like this by the election of grace and the privilege of alignment and sensitivity you can pick by the spirit the graces that are required 
but not in abundance or not available. And the assignment of the apostolic is to work in partnership with the Spirit of God to make for an abundance of the Spirit of wisdom or the grace for prosperity or the prophetic. The apostolic has the mandate by grace under God to become transmuters of the same. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm saying this because of what is about to come upon your head. We have abused impartation to a point that we do not even know the value of transferring these spiritual virtues. It is beyond falling down, it's beyond saying amen. There are two principal ways, or three, that the anointing is transmuted. I wish I had the time to teach you on the anointing. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. As much as all things come from God, the system of administering the treasures of heaven has always been through men. So every time God wants to open to men a portal of spiritual possibilities, he does not come to a congregation, he finds a man. And through the sacrifice of alignment, he brings that man by covenant into that dimension of spiritual reality and place great dishonor to that vessel. So you can trace the origin of certain graces in the body to men. When you want to learn faith, start from any man of God, it will end with Kenneth Copeland today. Start from anywhere across Africa, it will keep transiting because they have become custodians of the mysteries of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Until Billy Graham died, as great as all these men were, he was the custodian of the evangelist. That is why every time God wants you to rise, it doesn't matter what nation you are in, he will create a system where you have a contact with these graces. When there was deficiency of oil, the suggestion in Matthew 25 was, go to them that sell and buy. There are always them that sell, except that you don't buy with money, you buy with humility, you buy with discernment. This is one of the unbecomings of our arrogant generation where everybody says, I have access to God. It does not matter. The spiritual things do not work like that. And by a prophet, the Lord God brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet was he preserved. Are we together now? When God wants to lift a man, he sends men. When Satan wants to destroy a man, he sends men. There are many of you who are into the ministry of prophetic psalmistry. You have done the best you know, but the level of grace that is required to gain that ascendance is not yet there. This conference was organized to grant you contact to ancient wells. There are wells that flow with such depth. The Bible says a river came out of the east of Eden and it parted itself into four and it begins to list the treasures that are locked up within that river. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. E -I -E -I. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. E -I -E -I -A. It was in a Renhard Bonke crusade many years ago. I stood there, it was a crowd like this. I was already a man of God, but I was desperate for a dimension. And you see, when you are desperate for something, pride dies. You throw it away and say, I desire this grace. I remember I went for that crusade day one. I saw mighty miracles through the preaching of the gospel with simplicity, childlike simplicity. By the next day, I said, no, I have to serve this grace because service is one of the keys that governs impartation. And I said, I was not in any committee. I was pushing people from the wheelchair to the front. And someone looked at me and said, oh, but you are not part of the committee. I said, what committee? You don't know the hunger that I carried from where I was. I respect order, but not with respect to this hunger. While I was pushing them, I said, Lord, this is what will also happen in my meetings. Can I tell you, no matter your encounter with Jesus, 
if you are Saul, he will still send you to somebody. After Jesus encountered Paul, you would think he would not need any man. He referred him to the man who would continue his building. God will always use men in spite of your encounters. Listen to me. Rain had bunker. When he was done preaching by day two, I stood on that crusade ground for six hours with hunger. Six hours as a man of God. When he was done preaching, he wanted to take a cup of water to now minister the baptism. Suddenly, my hunger had gone to the heavens. Something happened. And the heavens were opened. And I saw a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. A giant bird as big as this, this whole structure, hovering round. What is this? I thought everyone was seeing it. There is something about genuine hunger in the spirit of a man. Listen, by the time I was done with that sight, I had turned to back the stage right there. And Reinhard Bonke prayed. And the Spirit of God took me to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. And the Spirit hovered around the face of the waters. And the Lord told me the union of the movement of the Spirit and the spoken word is what produces the miraculous. My life changed from that day. I am a product of many anointings. Many, many, many anointings. Many anointings. I have seen Jesus by the privilege of God's grace. I have met some of the spirits of just men made perfect. And I say this with every sense of humility. The last of my encounters with them was the man Paul. We do not preach cunningly devised fables. We are products that have been furnished by the furnace of affliction. Forged like a reed out of fire. Do not be beguiled and deceived by the glitz and glamour, the paraphernalia that comes around ministry. These men that you see are men who the Bible tells us that the earth was not worthy of. It will take time for us to see the form and fashion of people who have been built by the Spirit, who are here represented. You will need to look beyond the frame of the flesh to see the contents that resides in some of the men and the women who are here present. I'm saying this because there will be a distribution of authentic graces. Genuine power for God's sake. Some of these things that have brought reproach to the body of Christ. We claim to carry anointings we cannot prove. I'm carrying the healing anointing. The sick have not been healed. I'm carrying a prophetic anointing. We are prophet, pro, all kinds of things. When he sends a word to Jacob. It lightens upon Israel. We're wrapping up Rema Fest 2023. And I beseech everyone by the message of God. I want us to align with God for the next 10 minutes. As we receive him coming upon us as the rain. Isaiah 32, 15. Until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. And then the wilderness shall be counted for a fruitful field and a fruitful field be counted for a forest there are men tonight who will arise at the end of your encounter you must look like someone in the bible otherwise your encounter was false there has to be a parallel to what you are becoming the names that are captured in scripture i taught you they are not just names of men Every name in the scripture is a spiritual pathway that follows, that you follow to become a certain kind of believer. So when you hear Esther, Esther is not just the name of a woman who married a king. Esther is the name given to a spiritual pathway that leads an individual to ascend from your lowly estate and be granted the grace to get into government and represent the purposes of God there. The name of that pathway is Esther. Gideon 
is not just the name of a man it's a description of a spiritual pathway where God meets a man from your lowly estate and begins to challenge you until you rise to become a warrior Samson is not just the name of a man it's a description of his spiritual pathway when you walk with the Holy Spirit he begins to diverge us to different kinds and quality of believers that become a parallel of what we see in Scripture so as graces are falling tonight there are people that the grace will turn to Esther there are others the grace will turn to Elijah there are others the grace will turn you to Daniel some Joseph everybody will not be Elijah that will be dangerous if everybody is Elijah we're in trouble if everybody is Esther we're in trouble if everybody is Gideon we're in trouble it takes Elijah plus Esther plus Abraham plus Anna you name them that equals a holistic revival until now our concept of revival has been the emergence of just Elijah's or Esther's that is inaccurate true biblical revival is the outpouring of the Spirit of God that diverges men to become various mold of believers according to the geography of their, their assignment and according to the will of God for a generation so you can the anointing can come upon you and while you are you are desirous to prophesy what will come upon you will give you supernatural access and visibility you will find out that after tonight it looks like those in government have an interest in you it is because of the kind of grace that has come upon you are we together distribution of graces depend on two factors number one your hunger and your press number two the predeterminate counsel of God as far as his program is earmarked there is a certain revelation of Jesus you will never have no matter how aligned you are because our encounters produce certain biases that become profitable for our call so if you are not designed to function in a certain way God will not reveal himself in a certain way to you even if you desire it because that revelation will corrupt the pathway you are to take if you are Esther and you have Elijah's encounter you will no longer become Esther Elijah's encounter cannot produce Esther and if Elijah mentors Esther she will not become Esther she will become Elijah that we need to drink of tonight before we go home your pastor Reverend Julian is a man with such a unique blend of grace grace for ministry grace for the marketplace and yet there are many 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 respectfully speaking pastors who are struggling financially struggling in terms of supplies but everybody wants their individual encounters and would not align to the system that God has provided it is pride let me tell you simply in in the most modest description it is pride there are fountains that have been dug already you will not have to dig it again it's been dug by the wisdom of God your assignment is to draw by the spirit and become of stature there are people here like Apostle John Kimani I don't know if he's gone I don't know he was around yes he's there praying I had a little chat with him and a great man of prayer I'm told about the magnificent buildings and yet there are pastors respectfully speaking when you see consistency there is a grace behind it don't disrespect results are we together it was Apostle Grace who was talking here in five years doing the kinds of things that he's doing here comes the comment from our arrogant generation it's just luck I think it's just because it's Uganda we have mastered the art of downplaying people's sacrifices with God is the reason why we never receive even through proximity many people are close to graces that can rewrite the narratives of their life I'm not teaching human worship I know that there are people who have abused this and manipulated people this is why God is helping us to bring clarity in love to the body of Christ hallelujah are you ready for this impartation the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me 
and he said to me every city and every nation and every territory I send you to the light that came from you to me from me to you there must be someone in that congregation there must be someone in that congregation that that light that came from me to you brilliant light entered my spirit I couldn't explain it how I did not die is a mystery that I will ask him but from that day I was given the eyes and the ears of the spirit capacity by the spirit and I say this with every sense of humility because we are standing tonight on holy ground and I beseech you by the mercies of God let's drop our titles and our prejudices and let us receive that which God has in store for us are you ready I want to pray for you we may not have time to bring anyone but I want to plead with you in the name of Jesus Christ please whoever is under the anointing close to you I told you yesterday let that become your business so you help hold the person so that we don't have people um, who sustain injuries because of this father in the name of Jesus the son of the living God here at Rema Fest 2023 as a privileged steward of the mysteries of the kingdom I stand in partnership with the graces that are here represented and I stretch my hands oh God where are those like he said who are called into the prophetic I'm seeing an eagle I stretch my hands right now let the fountain of the prophetic in Kenya in Africa we speak to that fountain Ephata be open Ephata be open receive of that grace right now receive of that grace right now I stare up the prophetic the eyes that see and the ears that hear in the name of Jesus Christ let me pray for the evangelistic there are men and women that must rise and take back the mantles of Renhard Bonke the mantles of T.L. Osborne these mantles are there for the taking I pray for you may that grace rest upon you right now may that grace rest upon you right now may that grace rest upon you right now hallelujah earlier this year the Lord began to reveal to me that there is going to be a restoration of the healing ministry as it was in the 60s and the 70s there has been a painful decline of the healing ministry that those of us who claim that we're walking in a bit of this thing we would not even be qualified to be ushers in Bible days by the standard we now have. But there is going to be a restoration. I want to release the healing mantle. I don't know who must carry this grace, but there is a man who has been fasting. There is a woman who has been fasting. I stretch my hands like a mighty rushing wind. May that grace rest upon you now. Scottish Kaliata, women after the order of Catherine Kuhlman, MP Semple McPherson, in the name of Jesus Christ, receive the impartation of that grace, mighty grace upon your life. Kelanch Kalash Savras Kebraka de Beleka Dosa Grasepa Hashikata. Ah, hallelujah. I'm seeing the vision of a brazen altar. This is representing the spirit of prayer and supplication. Hear me. Any territory that must birth and sustain revival must understand the art of holding on to the altar. There are some of you who have been called into the ministry of prophetic intercession. I want to stir up that fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Men and women who can pray, not just need driven prayer prayer that negotiates the destinies of men in the spirit birthing revivals across cities receive that grace right now receive that grace in the name of the lord jesus christ i impart that grace upon you the grace to pray the grace to travel after the order of anna the prophetess after the order of elijah the prophet after the order of Daniel the prophet you will pray and pray the program of God to 
bad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One last prayer that I will pray for you. And then I will invite these great men to come and join me here. Hear me. There is a grace for visibility. Hmm. Until that grace comes upon you, you can be gifted, but the nations will not know you are there. There is a grace that gives men visibility. Hallelujah. Can I tell you? It takes more than eloquence of speech for a generation to hear you and to receive you as touching what you carry. You can be rejected as a generation, as a genuine man of God, a gifted personality. There are many books, many graces that cannot speak transcontinentally, regardless whatever formula they bring. Because by the privilege of God's grace to release this grace upon you, the grace that will cause your voice to be heard, the grace that will cause you to be seen, the grace that will cause your products, your services, your impact to be appreciated. May that grace rest upon you now. May that grace rest upon you now. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Watch this. Can I, with all due respect, let me invite our father to represent the generation of the fathers. Let me invite Reverend Kula to represent the apostolic ministry in the marketplace. Let me invite Apostle Grace Lubega. Let me invite Minister Dunsin. And is it possible to invite Apostle John Kimani? Please come, sir. We are standing to do something very prophetic here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Let's honor them as they come. Now, listen. Among the many things that God is doing this night is that God is restoring unity to his body. The days of pushing a man of God because you do not understand what he represents criticizing one another on the strength of revelation you are better than this you are did those days we are burying them on this altar that out of africa will come the bride of christ a true portrait of love a true portrait of wisdom a true portrait of power the truth is that we may differ as touching the various dimensions of graces that he has given us we may differ as touching our levels of press alignment and sacrifice However, our differences should not be a reason for criticizing one another, hating one another. Wherever you are, lift the flag of your nation representing the unity of Africa. We are going to pray. I will ask these noble servants of God who will give the mic from one person to the other as they speak, releasing the dimension of grace that he has brought upon their lives. I would plead that we'll end with our Father. By the privilege of God's grace, you may not know so much about our father bishop, but he has been the interpreter to many of the men of God who have visited your nation. He's traveled with them. He saw them. He ate with them. He's representing the generations past, but he's also representing the connection point. Samuel will always need Eli. And he's standing, and we're standing as sons. Also to stand as symbols of God's mercy for our carelessness and foolishness insulting the fathers of faith. Lest we bring a curse upon our generation. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So this is a very prophetic moment. I do not want you to miss this Kenya. I do not want you to miss this Nigeria, Uganda, South Africa. We are standing as men helped by God. Not the best, but the ones who he has shown mercy. And upon the strength of that which he has done in our lives, by the privilege of God's grace, we want to release it freely to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me start with Minister Dunsin. All those who have been called into the ministry of prophetic psalmistry, there are wells that we need to drink from. As he speaks over your life, do not just see him as a worshiper. 
receive it as coming from an apostle and a prophet of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. I'm going to first sing a song prophetically. I see the Lord. I see the Lord. It's all Of the people of the earth, I see the Lord. I see the Lord. For my eyes, I've seen the King. The Lord. shall come to pass in that day that I will rise the tabernacle of David which has fallen down in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I command let that well be open men and women after the order of David rising up from East Africa from West Africa from South Africa in the name of the Lord Jesus from North Africa, I declare, let there be a ladder that says, Come up, Peter. Come up, Peter. Come up, Peter. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's a new season. Begin to hear the sounds of the Spirit by the gift of intimacy. For blessed is the man whom the Lord causes to approach him as the deer pants for water. So your soul longs after the Lord and you shall hear a song as in the night. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command let this well open now. Let this well open now. Let this well open now. My God, let this well open now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Can I please invite Apostle John Kimani that out of the abundance of the investment of the Spirit of God upon his life, let something rest upon someone. Glory to God. Thank you, Apostle Joshua Salomon. Um, as I pray, I want to say something that uh, when uh, the servant of God, uh, Jerry Ezi from Nigeria, was ministering online, Something dropped in my spirit when he was speaking about deliverers and saviors coming from Zion. And you know, Zion was where the temple was built to represent the presence of God, to represent the gathering of God's people today. And I felt that from Lema Feast, they are saviors, they are deliverers that are going to rise in the mighty name of Jesus. God is taking away our shame as Africa and our deliverers are rising. Every time Israel cried unto the Lord, the Bible says that God raised a deliverer from among them. Our deliverers are not going to come from the West. Our deliverers are going to come from our Mideast. And that is why we are standing before you this day in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, my Father and my God, uh, I release our deliverers uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, from Rema Fest, oh my God, uh, let there be saviors uh, and deliverers, oh God. Uh, in families, my Father, raise deliverers, oh God. Uh, someone is here, oh God, uh, and they have the mark of a deliverer in their family. Touch them now. From Ramaphes, my father, let them go forth with power and strength. Every Goliath, by the anointing, in the 
the name of Jesus, let there be a rising of Christ by the anointing. In the name of Jesus, raise the river as my father. In every village, in every city, in the name of Jesus, raise the river as oh God. In every mountain, the mountain of governance, the river as a rising. In the mountain of commerce and business, the river as a rising. In the mountain of education, the river as a rising. In media, the river as a rising. I release the unction, the mantles for deliverers, the Gideons who are going to destroy evil altars in the name of Jesus. Yes! Receive the grace of a deliverer. You have the mark. You have the grace of a deliverer. Oh my God, there are people who are crying with cancer, cancer, but they are delivered. In the name of Jesus, yes, deliver us, rise, go forth, in the name of Jesus. Not by mind, not by power. But by the Spirit of the living God, I commission you from Lema first. Rise as a savior. Don't despise yourself in the name of Jesus. For the power of God is upon you. Receive the grace of a deliverer from Lema first. Saviors to every corner of this nation to every corner of Africa and the nations of the world. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Let me plead with Reverend Julian. And I want you to receive this unique grace that God has given this man. Dominion over the marketplace. A true manifestation of the apostolic. Yes, sir. Thank you, Apostle. Thank you, Apostle Selman. One of my very clear scriptures that I use a lot is the book of Nehemiah. The book of Nehemiah represents a grace for builders. It also represents the ability to know and have the language of speaking to kings. The positioning of Nehemiah being a cupbearer was a positioning for exposure and learning to learn the language of kings so that kings can release the resources that are needed by kingdom people to build quickly. Very great prophetic people had the desire to build, but they did not have the ear of the king. And as a result, it took a hundred years for them to try and achieve what Nehemiah achieved in 52 days because he had the ear, the language, and the understanding of how to speak to kings. One of my prayers today is that God will touch the mind and the tongue. He said, come let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. And the people built the wall up to half its height because the people had a mind to work. And so once the resources are made available, the mind to work becomes possible because there is no longer a lack of resources. I'm praying this combined prayer that God will begin to raise kingdom champions that will further the provision necessities required by the kingdom to shift economies and to change the perception of the church across Africa. The change of Africa is not going to come from even other echelons, and echelons that we think that will come from if it has not yet been fully birthed in the church in the way it should. And so I'm praying right now for everybody that has a spirit of the marketplace. The gift of the marketplace. Psalm 90.17 says that the Lord shall establish the work of your hands. We speak over every hand here and declare that hand shall not be idle. 
there is no hand that shall be idle that hand shall begin a work that your great grandchildren shall find in the name of Jesus but God is going to give you the tongue that is going to find the favor of kings that means God is going to give us access to people that we never had access to before but access is not enough the language for that access is required the place where we just want to go and take selfies with people of influence has come to an end the reason for access is so that we can be able to change the destiny of a people father we decree in the name of jesus a people are rising in this season at this rema feast 2023 coming out of here father to go make a difference in the nations the way we enter qatar and dubai and we see and say who are these people father this is what shall happen in africa people shall travel from all over the world there shall be distinction from the airports there shall be distinction in the marketplace they shall ask who are these that dress like these who are these that speak like this who are these that have a mind like this the mind of excellence the speech of excellence the wisdom on the tongue is coming upon the people of God favor with kings is coming upon the people of God the ability to negotiate balance sheets the ability to stay in the city the ability to become the repairers of the breaches here tonight in the name of Jesus and so we declare over every kingdom champion here a new grace is coming upon them where there was lack before father give them the mind to know how to interpret that place of lack to the place of opportunity Lord let them wake up at three with after speaking in tongues and praying that you will pour out light light that will bring ideas for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but we wrestle against principalities we wrestle against ideologies we wrestle against philosophies father you will grant them ideologies that will battle ideologies you will grant them understanding that will battle philosophies and father they shall stand in positions of wealth and be able to receive respect in the marketplace every door is opening because jesus you are the door and if jesus is the door no door shall be closed to us in the name of jesus we declare the doors open in the marketplace the seas are open for the children of god to prosper receive the mind to grow receive the wisdom to become and receive the understanding to sustain what god puts in your hand in jesus name amen hallelujah praise the name of the lord let's receive from apostle grace lubega many of you have desired to walk in certain graces that god has put upon his life now is the time to receive with all your heart that what god has done through him in uganda spreading across the globe that that same grace will rest on someone yes, please. Um, allow me to just say three things very quickly as a direction of prayer one the apostle spoke about repentance and i feel that that's the first thing that i in prayer we need to commit as ministers especially of the gospel because we have many maimed destinies that have been a work of us to repent for the sons that have been killed along the way the miscarriages and the spiritual abortions that have been our work the young men and women that we have killed so early because we are envious and competitive and comparing with each other the people whose stars we preferred to deem, not because God had written them off, but because we wanted to be a better version than they are. Yeah, I, I believe that it's a very key thing for us to repent. Africa, we have to repent. We have to repent. The second thing, Nigeria might not, uh, with Nigeria it's already happening, but in East Africa we had a challenge. And the challenge has been on membership, oh, growth, church growth. We have a serious issue in East Africa, a serious one. We, we look in, with envy when we see what God is doing in, in Nigeria. Uh, but again, when you go North Africa, it's, it's, we don't see it. And, and partly I was praying with some believers in South Africa, it's the same. Something is not really breaking through. And I feel that shepherds here who love God and have given everything of their own 
to see the ministry grow. But they don't see it. This is the time. I said, this is the time. There was a time in Uganda, you could not have a weekly service of 2,000 people. In Uganda, north, east, west, south, 48 million people. And I flew to Singapore and I found this man, six million, five, six million. What Joseph Prince was doing, it shocked me in such a small numbers. I realized it's not even about numbers. It's God. And at least we've seen something in Uganda. We've had meetings of 60,000 people. Crusades of 50,000 people in different regions. What you see here, we're having it every week. To the glory of God. Something has to happen in our land. And lastly, you'll allow me to just take only at least a minute that we pray for this man. Because you're the reason why this has come. Like the man of God has said, you, Kenya has become the venue because of you. God cannot forget this sacrifice. He will not forget this sacrifice. Heavenly Father, let me begin by repenting as a church. Forgive us. Forgive the apostles. Forgive us. Well, we've inflated our egos because we see or hear and judge things out of pattern and line because your heart was not a revelation. The prophets forgive us. Well, we judged out of love because we could see. The pastors, the spiritual fathers, the Bible says you came to turn the hearts of fathers to sons before the sons turned to fathers. Break our egos that will reach out to the sons even before they think to reach out to us. And for the sons that we forgive, even as we seek forgiveness, where we went out of order, forgive us. Forgive us for dividing the very people you shed your blood for. Forgive us for disintegrating the very things that you have built and shed your blood for. Forgive us for disqualifying people you appointed and equipped. Forgive us for giving up on people so quickly and too soon. Forgive us for competing. Forgive us for comparing. Forgive us for transacting on your altars. Forgive us for seeking attention. And political favors instead of opening our ears only to you and speaking what your oracles deserve. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We also pray, Lord, that may this be the door to see supernatural growth in ministry. We decree and we declare in the name of Jesus that the days are here where we're going to see 200, 300,000 members going to ministry to receive truth. And like the apostle said, may we not look just at the membership. May it not be a statistic. May we understand the responsibility we carry as those sent by you. God, we believe we're going to see an improvement in the church of East Africa. In Uganda, in Tanzania, and it's extending in South Africa, in, in Malawi, in, in Zambia, in Zimbabwe, in Muslim nations like Tunisia, in Libya, in Morocco, in Egypt. May we see things that will, I mean, may men fly in the sky and ask, what is that big building? And may somebody tell them it's people who know Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we also pray for Reverend Kula. The vessel that you have chosen to star and open this realm for Africa, which is just the beginning. I didn't see him preach much. I saw him <laughs> allow us to minister. 
there's a liberty in his spirit that is not intimidated by greatness. Because he's inviting something in this nation money cannot buy. I feel in my spirit to tell you, sir, and allow me to prophesy this, to prophesy this. There are fathers in nations. And there are fathers to nations. There are prophets in Africa and their fathers, I mean prophets to Africa. I hear the Spirit say, you're not only a father in this land, but you're a father to this land. And I feel those graces extend on your sons and daughters. They will not just be fathers in, they will be two. Two. The extension of the grace operating on their lives will be beyond description. And I see it extend on a man, a woman this evening who also says, I receive it out of its responsibility, not last. We bless you, Lord, for Rema Fist. And may we see these lights, these flames go through Africa with the men and women you choose. Give us the grace, Lord, that if we ever see a man or woman you have raised, even if it's not us, give us the grace to pray for them. Because we're at a point where it's no longer, it's not important who you use, but it's important that you use a man and a woman. It's important that you choose somebody because the what is happening in the gospel across the world, what is happening in Europe and the very people who gave us this gospel who knew the things we were teaching who extended the things that we are expending Lord help us and raise sons and daughters too to go back to Europe and Asia and America to give back to the grandchildren of those men who shed their blood in Africa, who lived in places where white men would not live. And when you send us, may we be faithful. In Jesus' name, amen. He's speaking as a father. He's representing a generation and I plead, I know we have endured. This is a very prophetic thing that God is doing. And I plead that we throw away every sense of carelessness and be very discerning even as he speaks over us. Yes, sir. Lord, we thank you. I know I put it on. Yeah, this is better. Lord, we thank you tonight because you have said in your word as you close the Old Testament in the book of Malachi that in the last days I will turn the hearts of the fathers to their sons and the hearts of the sons to their fathers lest I cast the land with a curse. I thank you that this is a multi-generational meeting. There are fathers, my fathers here. And there are people who are my sons here. And there are people who are their sons here. What you promised Abraham was manifested not in Abraham or Isaac or Jacob but to the children of Israel. The four generations represented here. Lord, let this grace pass from those who are my fathers through my generation. To those who are my sons, Lord, we are praying that their sons 
and their sons' sons shall see the manifestation of what was released to the eyes of Joe Kyle, Wilson Mamboleo, Silas Owiti, Samuel Mwathas, Arthur Kitongas, Paul Mutuas, Frederick Mawazas, the many men who travailed, Isaac Haguli, the many men who travailed in this country and in Uganda, first of Kivenjere, Mungoma, Stephen Mungoma, and Nicholas Wafula, and others who travailed for years, Alexander Idin in the Congo, the Philip Molefes of South Africa, Nicholas Bengus of South Africa. Dear God, I pray, what people like Emmanuel Lazaro and Moses Kulola in Tanzania travailed for and prayed for. The late Archbishop Guti in Zimbabwe, the things that travailed for dear father, Lord, we pray that there will be a generation now and it is here. I say it is here. I say it is here. Your fathers saw them, but you shall enter into them. You shall possess them. You shall conquer them. You shall settle in them. You shall manifest them to the glory of God. To them it was a vision. To you it shall be reality. It shall manifest in your days. That your generation shall see revival, visitation, healing. People being filled by the Holy Spirit in public transport. People being healed as they sit next to you. In a public bus. Miracles shall happen. People shall deliver from demonic oppression. Just by shaking your hand. Let it manifest. Let it come to pass. In your day. May you experience it. May you see salvation. And dear father. I am praying that God, you shall raise fathers, genuine fathers, to father these generations. Make fathers out of many that are here. Make mothers out of many who are here. But first of all, make sons out of them. Let the sons walk in the humility and honor the fathers. And Father, on behalf of the fathers, I repent. Well, we, we have abused the sons, killed our sons, cast our sons, condemned our sons. Lord, forgive us. And on behalf of the fathers, if your father never blessed you, or cast you like Jacob cast his son Reuben for any reason. Tonight I stand in this place in the order of Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 6 where Moses speaks of a Reuben and counsels what Jacob said and declared let Reuben live and his people not to be filled yeah. by the grace of God upon my life. Yeah. I speak of every son yeah. who was never blessed by a father. Yeah. Or the father cast you yeah. by the grace of God flowing here. Yeah. And by the anointing upon my life, yeah. I cancel that curse. Yeah. I reverse that curse. Yeah. And I release upon you. The blessing that Jacob released on Joseph. May you become fruitful. May you be a vine that is fruitful. May you scale over a wall. May you go over every gate. 
May you go for every door. May the earth on which you walk bless you. May the heaven under which you walk bless you. You shall be blessed during the day. You shall be blessed during the night. And your future. I said your future shall be greater than your past. Your beginning could have been small. But right now, by the grace of God upon my life, I declare your future shall be greater than your past. May the living God who gave Abraham longevity, may he multiply your days and add years to your life. May he give you quality days and quality years in Jesus' mighty name. And together we say, and again we say, Hallelujah. Thank you very, very much, Kenya. Thank you for receiving me. Thank you for receiving us. Thank you for all that you have done. And we decree and declare that the Lord bless you. You only go from glory to glory to glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Can dial that three three four Lipan and Pesa option one day pay bill four zero seven five nine zero five account frame office. Use that for, you want to give an offering, even now you can use that pay bill number business number four zero seven five nine zero five. Use that and God bless you. If you see fireworks. Don't be surprised. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.